The main type of steppe politics was simple enough. When one of the tribes became too strong, the other tribes were united against it. The variety of unions was explained by a large number of inter-clan relations. Unity or dissension of clans in the same tribe, as well as friendship or rivalry of leaders. Transitions of his army were not measured in kilometers, but in degrees of latitude and longitude. The whole Christian world quaked to one name, Genghis Khan, and Muslims were convinced that all his actions were actions of a supernatural creature. Rustan Rahman Aliyev, the Turks Empire, Great Civilization. The curate king couldn't recognize the opponent in his vessels in time and didn't deal away with him when he proclaimed Khan in 1182. When one Khan began to understand the situation, it was too late. Perhaps he wanted to end up in peace and quiet, but his own son, Prince Sengum, pushed him to break. Sengum advised his father, Wan Khan, to support Jamuha in the fight against Genghis Khan. The fact is that he had a close relationship with Jamuha who, at his insistence, had taken refuge at Kerit court after collapse of his hopes for the kingdom. Having agreed with Sengun, Jamuha instigated mistrust of Wang Kang to Genghis Khan, accusing the latter of treason towards the Kerit leader. Simultaneously, Altan, the legal heir of ancient Mongol Khans, who didn't want the throne to fall into hands of the upstart, also came to Wang Kang and began to incite him to war against his former ally. There was a final break between Genghis Khan and the Karaites. It was a turning point in the Mongol leader's life. So far, he had played the second role under the rule of Wang Khan, although he performed his role brilliantly, and then he began to fight against him, claiming the main role. At Sengum's instigation, the Karaites tried to deal away with Genghis Khan. They decided to invite him to a meeting ostensibly for reconciliation. Then they would have organized a surprise attack to take him aback. Two officers overheard a Kerry general telling his family members of the plot and warned Genghis Khan. Later, he appointed them Tarkans with the right to have bodyguards. Genghis Khan took necessary measures immediately. At first, he retreated to the Maondure area where he left a small patrol post and the next day he went further to the mountains near the source of the Halagun Ol. Despite the fact that the scouts warned him of approach of the enemies, Genghis Khan was to play the most difficult game of his career. The battle was hard. Old Will Daraj and Gishan's ally, the Urut clan's leader, showed prodigies of valor and didn't only he did it. Nevertheless, because of numerical superiority of the Karaites, Genghis Khan left the battlefield at night. His third son, Ugadai, and two of the most devoted officers, Borchu and Boraku, failed to leave in due time. When they reunited, Boraku on horseback held in his hands Ugadai, wounded by an arrow in the belly. As the secret history says, seeing this picture, the Iron Commander began to cry.
Это было тяжелое сражение. Не сколько в тактическом, стратегическом плане, сколько в моральном, психологическом. It was a heavy battle, not in a tactical, strategic sense, but in a moral, psychological sense. When your close allies suddenly turn away from you, in fact betray you, make an alliance behind your back. This is a heavy burden, let's say. To survive it psychologically, not to break down, but on the contrary, to mobilize and to try by all means to prevent your fall, that was whole Genghis Khan. Of course, there were also sympathetic people on the side of his rivals. For example, there were two Kerate Noyons who came and warned Genghis Khan of the ambush and betrayal. They also felt sympathetic to him in their own way, and saw this whole injustice, which was around him and against him. I must say that their honor, inner attitude, core and dignity didn't allow them to commit such villainy. In general, all people surrounding Genghis Khan were collected and appointed just after this battle. In this fight, Genghis Khan lost many people. After that, he cried a lot and suffered. But he also acquired his future comrades in arms, his future military commanders. In particular, I can say about Jebenoyon. He was named Jebe, arrow, because he wounded Genghis Khan in the neck with his arrow. But for this, he was not punished. On the contrary, Genghis Khan gave him a place in his ranks. Genghis Khan respected brave, direct people and hated traitors. Some more, O oh Khan, my father. What right did you approve for me? What benefit did you bring me? And I have all these rights for you, and I delivered some benefits to you. Why do you frighten me? Why don't you sit quietly and have rest? Why don't you let your daughters-in-law and sons sleep peacefully? I, your son, have never said that my share is small. I want more. Or it is bad, I want better. Rashida Din Annals. For Genghis Khan, it was a hard period. In the face of the enemy's numerical superiority, he was forced to retreat far to the north to the Mongol border, to the Baikal region. He left with a handful of supporters to the source of the Tura River, to the south of Chita and they had to drink muddy water from a small lake, Baljuna. There he spent the summer of 1203. The people who shared exile hardships with him, Baljunians, were afterwards amply rewarded. Meanwhile, the coalition formed against Genghis Khan broke up again, because the nomads who formed it considered themselves bound only with seasonal military pacts. According to Rashid ad-Din, some of Mongol leaders who joined Wang Khan out of hatred for Genghis Khan, Dari Tai, Huchar, Altan, Jamuha, conspired to kill Kirit's king. Wang Khan was warned in time, and he took severe measures, but the conspirators fled away. Jamuha, Huchar and Altan went to the Naimans, and Dari Tai went cap in hand to Genghis Khan. In this regard, Genghis Khan's situation improved significantly, when in autumn of 1203 he moved towards the Onon, in order to seize the initiative. He instructed Khazar, whose family was in Kerit's hands, to dull vigilance of Wan Khan with false promises. As a result, Wan Khan entered into peace negotiations and sent Genghis Khan a bullhorn filled with blood as a sign of confidence. At the same time, Genghis Khan, after a hidden march, 
attacked Kyrie Tommy and scattered it. This battle, which according to secret history took place near the Gier mountain between sources of rivers Tola and Carolin, marked the final triumph of Genghis Khan. Wang Kang and his son Sengum fled to the west. Arriving at the Naiman country, Wang Kang was murdered, apparently by mistake. After defeat of Wang Kang, Genghis Khan strengthened. The news of his victory, glory, flew across the steppe. Wang Kang, having suffered defeat, was forced to go to the Naimans, to Tayang Khan. However, due to an evil coincidence, the border patrol didn't recognize Tayang Khan and killed him. I will not leave erased encampments and dwelling of my ancestors and forefathers. I will not lose and spoil their way and rules. Rashid ad Din, Annals. The path to hegemony in the Mongol steppe was opened for Genghis Khan. The significance of this event cannot be overestimated. Assistant Khan of one of the largest proto-states in the Mongol steppes harshly changed the whole political situation there within a year or two. Having annexed Wang Khan's possessions, Genghis Khan became equal to all groups of Mongol tribes, the Naimans and their allies who remained beyond his power. It is no wonder that the events of defeat of the Karaites shocked contemporaries. Up to the 17th century, descendants of Mongol conquerors of Siberia had epic legends about them. So, the most powerful and ancient Christian Canate in Central Asia ceased to exist. It fell victim to pagans. Based on the sources, we can make a conclusion that the Mongols themselves didn't attach importance to the difference in faith. And from this point of view, it is very important that the Karaites themselves held the same opinion. The Karaites submitted to Genghis Khan and since then served him truly. However, cautious Genghis Khan distributed Karait elements in various Mongol clans. sharp change in the political situation didn't go unnoticed by the Naiman head, Tayang Khan, who clearly expressed the essence of the matter. It is said that within these limits, a new sovereign appeared. We know for sure that it is destined to the sun and the moon to be together. But how to be or not the two sovereigns in one possession? Tayang Khan With this agreed Jamuha, who made the last stake in his game, joining Naiman coalition against Genghis Khan. The Kirits and Mongols had common traditions, unlike the Naimans, so the war between them should be regarded as tribal. Tayang Khan also, in turn, underestimated Genghis Khan. He always underestimated Genghis Khan. Tayang Khan believed that Genghis Khan was a step upstart, that he wasn't strong enough even after fall of the Karait Khanate. I think this was due to Tayang Khan's confession. As we know, at that time, the Naiman elite professed Nestorian Christianity, and perhaps some of his advisors 
taught him that no one could overcome the shadow of Christ on earth. That was the kind of faith he had in himself, because he always underestimated Genghis Khan. And subsequently, after such actions, he paid for it. These are my Temujin's for dog fed on human flesh. He tied them to an iron chain. These dogs have copper foreheads, carved teeth, styloid tongues and dying hearts. Instead of horse whips, they have curved sabers. They drink dew right on the wind. In battles, they devour human flesh. Now they are unleashed, they are drooling, they are rejoicing. These four dogs are Jebe, Koblai, Jelme, and Subutai. Jammu has replied to Tayang Khan, the secret history of the Mongols. In order to prevent the Naiman's attack, Genghis Khan called Kurultai in spring of 1204 on the bank of the river Tiamai Kai in Yuanxi, or Timian Ker in the secret history. Most military leaders were of the opinion that their horses were too emaciated and it was better to put off the campaign until the autumn. Genghis Khan's younger stepbrother Belgute and his uncle Ochigin Noyan insisted on immediate attack to catch the enemy off guard. Genghis Khan agreed with them and sent troops to the border of Naiman country. Before ordering the warriors to attack the Naimans, Genghis Khan put up his ancestral banner and sanctified it by libation. Some sources point out that he began military operations immediately. Others indicate that he attacked the Naimans only in the water. Tayan Khan's troops, with all his allied forces, moved toward the Mongols, from the Altai to the Kangai. Halfway they met the Mongol advance guard. According to Abu Ghazi, the battle took place near the river Altai, Altai Su. Secret history reports that on the eve of the battle, the Mongols lit a large number of campfires to deceive the enemy. Tayang Khan, falling for this trick, hesitated and was about to draw off his troops. His son, Kuchluk, was indignant at showing such cowardice. In the first minor action, his advanced troops suffered greatly, and Tayang Khan didn't dare to inflict a decisive blow. He held back his cavalry, rushing to the attack. The battle was fierce. In this battle, Khazar, Genghis Khan's brother, who commanded the center of the Mongol army, proved himself a talented military commander. By evening, the Mongols won the victory. Tayang Khan, seriously wounded, was carried on a hill by his warriors. The Naimans, who left without their leader, were subjected to Genghis Khan's authority. It was in 1204. Genghis Khan also received assurances of submission from Oirat leader Kutuk Baki. Genghis Khan thereafter attacked his old enemies Merkits and defeated them. Merkit beauty Kulan became his fourth wife.
In 1205, Genghis Khan's rival Jemuha, who managed to escape from captivity during the defeat of the Naimans, was captured by his own vessel and taken to Genghis Khan. The latter sentenced him to death, but remembering their old friendship, let him die without spilling blood. According to the Mongols' belief, the man's soul is in his blood. To kill him without spilling blood was regarded as good for his soul. This mercy was usually granted to royal family members convicted of treason, and in exceptional cases, to other high-ranking criminals. According to Genghis Khan's order, Jamuva's remains with relevant honors were placed in a special coffin. When the Chronicle authors embellished Genghis Khan's generosity and in order to exalt him emphasize Jamuha's cunning, it is astonishing to me that in fact Khan proposed to his former friend to reconcile. He promised to forget all betrayals of the man who had many times cheated, persecuted and betrayed him. In reply, Jamuha requested death for all his treacheries. The story of these people and its tragic ending could have inspired Sophocles. The last Merkit gangs were destroyed in Uigure by Mongol general Subite with Tokuchar, Genghis Khan's son-in-law. And even early, in 1207, the Kyrgyzes of the upper Yenisei, Tanu Ola or Minusinsk area, surrendered to Genghis Khan without a fight. Thus, the war for hegemony in the steppe ended with the conquest of the Merkits, and Genghis Khan became the winner in this war. Ironically, he began his way to it from destruction by the Merkits and ended with defeat of the latter. The steppe was again united, as in the days of the Turkic and Uyghur camps. Now, all Mongolia was under reign of Genghis Khan. His standard, a white flag with nine tails, became the banner of all Turk Mongols. Рода племенная элита, которая формировала вождя, которая делала выбор. И вот получается политическая элита в кочевых обществах действительно существовала, она формировалась на протяжении длительного времени, она стабилизировала общество. This was a tribal elite, which formed the leader and made the choice. And the political elite in nomadic societies really existed. It was formed over a long period of time. It stabilized the society and took responsibility for certain steps of the future ruler. In 679, the Turkey Kagan from Ashide clan preferred representatives from Ashina. He regularly chose them. Why did they opt it to this path? And how did they begin to form those political leaders, future supreme Kagans of Ashina? They were formed with the choice. For them, there was a clearly defined person who kept up traditions. This person must have charisma, he must be brave and courageous, he must have all necessary military and leading skills to lead the people. But at the same time, this person must have loyalty to the political elite that put him forward, so that they could raise him on a white felt. And during this period, perhaps Jamuha, unlike Timujin, behaved too arrogantly. He may have behaved insufficiently traditionally to respect this political elite. Although he put forward perhaps more progressive ideas for development of Mongol society. But what did this lead to? During this period of choice, the choice fell on Temujin. Probably he was weaker than Jamuha, less cunning than Jamuha. From the period of the Turks, principle of their wisdom added to this leader's image. In fact, this political elite possessed wisdom, Priests had it, 
But Warres didn't. К образу вот этого лидера, вождя, появляется принцип мудрости их. На самом деле мудростью обладала эта политическая элита, жрецы обладали, но никак не вождь, не воин. According to the command of the highest king, Tengri Hormuzd, my father, I subjected 12 earthly kingdoms. I brought into subjection unlimited willfulness of minor princes, great numbers of people who had wandered in poverty and oppression. I collected them and combined into one, and so I have done a great part of what I had to do. Now I want to rest my body and soul. Genghis Khan, The Secret History of the Mongols. How and why was the Mongol Empire formed? At that time, the Mongol tribe experienced a stage of collapse. Extreme growing animosity between the tribal aristocracy and unsubdued people who were eager to get out of the tribe's circle. This process set people who stood out of their tribes, so-called people of long will, a task of consolidation, but not on the basis of the tribal principle. Tribal elders wanted to create a confederation of tribes with an elected Khan, and Jamuha, an experienced warrior and dodgy politician, was suitable for this post. However, in this situation, people of long will had no place. Therefore, the latter grouped around Timujin, who was actually one of them. There was a political struggle, and as a result, various tribes came down to Genghis Khan's side. Antagonism of social forces grew, the camp of people of long will was uniform in its composition and intentions. The aristocratic camp was divided into two layers. Tribal aristocracy which conflicted with people of long will and members of tribes that potentially were the same as people of long will and differed only in their obedience to the nobility. This situation created instability in the tribal aristocracy camp and possibility for tribes to move to the Genghis Khan's camp, despite the social contradictions. And in the camp of people of long will, advancement of the military elite, led by Genghis Khan, transformed the struggle for freedom and independence into the struggle for dominance. Ataman Genghis Khan became a sovereign. After conquest of Western tribes, Genghis Khan was the undisputed ruler of the whole country from the Altai to the Great Wall of China. Consolidation of all its lands into a single state, of course, meant intention to restore the ancient Mongol Turkic Empire of the 11th century. Consolidation of separate independent Mongol tribes into one nation and organizing them into one state was the first and immediate task of Genghis Khan. Step unity traditions set up by the Hans and developed by the Turks didn't disappear in the 13th century. It was time to crown the building of nomadic culture, and it was clear that this would be done by the joint Turk-Mongols led by Genghis Khan. Commanders and tribal leaders who supported Genghis Khan knew that their newly created nation and experienced army were ready for further conquests.